Okay, I'm going to give y'all a little history on how I lost my license. Okay, exactly what happened. Okay, I was a teenager. I was programmed to be like all the other teenagers of the era. Okay, I got in all the stuff all the other ones did. I did all the stuff all the other ones did. Okay, the ones that I was around. Our norm was to be little white devils. Okay, we did a lot of evil stuff. And um, one of the evil things that I did was uh, when they dried up marijuana so that there was no marijuana to smoke, I would drink with the, those who were drinking. You see, because they would drink because there was no marijuana. So these people became alcoholics rather than just being able to smoke weed. And I was rolling with them and I would drink. But you see, I have no tolerance for alcohol. So every time I drank, I would get pulled over. <laughs> okay, from 16 to 18 years old, I got pulled over three times. That's within a seven year period. There's an antiquated law from the 1940s. It's an illegal law actually in this era now. <laughs> to even use it or even back when they used it against me 37 years ago okay uh, three driving under the influence offenses within a seven year period get your license irreversibly revoked and turned over to the driver's license appeal division back then my case outlasted the driver's license appeal division and they never purged the old cases and 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 you know restored us Instead, they just transferred me over, bounced me over to the new department that took over, which is D-A-A-D. I don't know what the A stands for. I forgot. But I did have to get interviewed by them and stuff the last time I tried to get my license back. So anyway, I went in front of a judge for uh, not showing up for one of my court dates. Because, <laughs> well, I was a kid and I didn't show up for my court date. <laughs> I was a retarded kid programmed by the mainstream and sports and religion to do what all them freaks want us to do, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I didn't go to court. And uh, the judge was a mean white devil who looked uh, at me with disdain the minute I walked in there. And uh, he knew about this antiquated illegal law, and he submitted my case to it. He submitted my driver's license to it. <laughs> yeah. I didn't try to get it back for years because well, I did feel like I deserved to lose it for a while. But I don't know, uh, 10 years later or so, 1992, I started trying to get it back. And I actually had the guy ready to give it back to me. I jumped through all their hoops and shit. And he was a German fuck Browsner. And uh, he was ready to give me my license back. But Lisa, she was still a kid. I had just hooked up with her. I took her with me there and for some reason he would not give it back to me until he talked to her. Well, he talked to her, and then he changed his mind about giving it back to me. <laughs> it's like, God, she sabotaged me, you see? So that was the closest I ever came to getting my license back. Cut to 2014. I finally get given money by my brother uh, to hire a lawyer. So I hired Kyle Legal, an ex-prosecuting attorney. This guy didn't do anything a lawyer would do. He did the stuff that a paralegal would do, you know, filed the papers and got me in front of the in front of the reviewer but he didn't speak up for me when he stood there next to me you know he didn't state any of the facts that hey you know the interview he just had that states that he's dependent on marijuana uh that's an opinion scientific fact is he dropped clean urines okay so he was not even using marijuana so therefore he's being judged as dependent on marijuana based on his religious beliefs and the words out of his mouth and the fact that he possesses a medical marijuana card had this lawyer just said those things to the retarded bitch that didn't want to give me my license back hearing officer ojibina she don't even got a first name she's such a plant an obvious plant okay she probably doesn't even work for them <laughs> But this was during the Obama administration, and there was a lot of sabotage coming from, like, the, you know, Capitol Hill and shit upon me, you know, secretly. So, <laughs> she rejected the opportunity to give me my driver's license back after 30, well, okay, 2014. Uh, subtract six years from 37, after 31 years. She should have jumped at the chance to give me justice, and she didn't. Chris Seeger was the freak monster from Catholic Human Services who got contracted to lie about me and create a fairy tale report that would um, make it easy for 
Paula Jabina not to give me my license back. You see, as well, she she had to report. Uh, you know, and just just act like the 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 scientific factual evidence of the clean drug screens is not there. Okay, and and that should not even be an issue because while my charges were not drug charges, I don't have any drug charges on my record. Okay, my charges were um, my charges were driving under the influence. And two of them happened before I was 18. So you can't take that and bump it over to where I'm getting charged as an adult, as a 16-year-old, just because it didn't get taken care of. That's illegal, you see? So all this has been illegal. I've been under illegal martial law for 37 years now, <laughs> okay? They had no right to keep me. The intent of the law is not to keep me, um, you know, castrated and emasculated compared to all other men. Well, I can't do what other men do and I can't support myself or pursue my happiness in America. That is not the intent of that law, okay? <laughs> and now they're using it against a bunch of other people. There's a whole bunch of people can't get their license back in Michigan, just like me. Uh-huh. And they, they're they finding out, you know, that there's 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 no recourse. There's no way to recoup. There's no, there's no justice. There's nobody to appeal to. And then you try to appeal to the president and he won't even help you because, well, look at what he's participating in now. Okay, there you go. That shows you where he's at. <laughs> okay, but see, now there's entities like me, beautiful transgender entities who are trying to help me get my license back, trying to help me get justice, the justice that I've been denied. And they, uh, one of them entities put up a uh, uh, change page, change.org, to try and get signatures. Well, people are, instead of just signing it and getting the opportunity to, to help somebody, um, which they would do if I was in prison for, you know, rape or murder or, you know, an illegal immigrant locked up for some atrocious, horrendous crime. They, they, would, they, would, just, they would just automatically click it, you know. They, 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 they would send it off to all their friends and share it everywhere. And they'd ha they would all click it without even bothering to worry about who or what the entity is. Because, well, their feet run quick to do evil, but to do good, they will not move. They are rooted like a tree. Uh-huh. And that's all these entities that won't click the, 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 the petition. To get it in, you know, to, to, you know, give a credence in the eyes of all these monsters posing as government who won't give me justice, right? Including Trump, your good hero. Uh-huh. He's not a hero to me. He's big old zero, just like Obama. He's just a hemorrhoid of Obama. <laughs> and Obama's a hemorrhoid of, of Bush. <laughs> you see? So it's like none of them are original. None of them brought anything original to the table. <laughs> but you see, instead of just clicking the thing... To help me, entities are instead researching me. Because for some reason, they can't help me unless they research me. So it's like, hey, I'm legendary online and half the stuff about me is lies. Okay? More than half of it is lies. It's sabotage. It was designed to make people hate me. It's actually backfiring because, well, people, they, they like uh, low vibrational mean entities. So all that stuff about being mean, being mean and low vibrational, that's actually making people want to listen to my music. So yeah, I don't bother trying to fight it no more. I can't defeat it anyway. There's too many doing it. <laughs> Some of them are in my family, yo. <laughs> but yeah, um, I was incarcerated for, uh, you know, after I lost my license and stuff, I was incarcerated for... Um, a sex crime that I couldn't possibly have committed because I was in a blackout drunk. And everybody who knows me knows that I can't sexually function once I've had too many drinks. I just can't get a heart on. I cannot perpetuate what uh, was said I perpetuated. And I figured because I was in blackout drunk that maybe my brother did do it. So, <laughs> so I tried to cover for him by giving my blood type, <laughs> you know, you know, giving him my blood type and I took his blood type. You know, I submitted that. And, uh, okay, so it's like, well, he must have did it. You see, you know, but you can't rape the willing. She wasn't that type of person. It would make you force her to do it. She just, if you suggested it, she wanted to, you see. So, uh, yeah, I got incarcerated for that. And that's where the escape came from. They wrongfully incarcerated me for a crime I didn't commit, and I felt it was bad enough. I was stigmatized the rest of my life uh, for, you know, a sex crime I didn't commit. So uh, I escaped. Yeah, and that's what you see. If you, if you Google me and you see charges, there's no drug charge. 
uh, the CSC was uh, third degree. By the time they were arguing at my sentencing, they weren't arguing, um, you know, you know, me coercing her or forcing her or any of that. They had already established that she agreed. If if it happened, that she agreed. Okay, that that she was consenting. What they instead argued. And, you know, if the real transcripts and true transcripts were still available, which I had a copy for years, um, the, the, during the sentencing, they argued um, consent laws, whether or not she was old enough to consent. You see, because I had turned 18. And they couldn't wait. <laughs> you see? <laughs> so it's like, because, well, you know, I was one of them evil little white devil children who I was a thorn in the side of uh, law enforcement for a long time with the little clique I was rolling with, the little gang. <laughs> you see? Now, um, I'm not that person anymore, and I don't drink anymore. I did go through an eight-month binge recently because, well, Lisa uh, knew my weakness. And, but, you know, I had been, before that, alcohol-free for 10 years, and I'm back to being alcohol-free ever since the first when I locked myself out of this house. <laughs> so it's like, no, I'm not going to do that again. I'm not drinking no more. So yeah, I haven't been drinking. I only drank for like uh, from April till till the end of December, you know, so however many months that is. Um, and I think it's eight months. And, uh, you know, it's like that was just a, a lapse because um, I got encouraged to socially drink repeatedly until it was no longer social for me. You see, I was just drinking it because I, well, I like to drink it. I like the vodka, the flavored vodka, Burnett's Red Berry and, and Cherry and Raspberry and stuff. I like their red ones. And uh, to me, they're a great beverage. And, and I like the buzz if I can moderate it and only do a few shots at a time. But uh, I got to the point because of the heart attack and I was medicating with the vodka. You know, I had a heart attack last August and I've got a stent in my heart. Uh, I was medicating with the vodka to stop the pain because I didn't know I was having a walking death heart attack. <laughs> For six six weeks I had it. I, I changed the caliper holding onto my chest writhing in pain. With one hand I changed the caliper on a van. Uh -huh. Couldn't use my other hand because I was too busy holding my chest. <laughs> yeah, I was having a heart attack for six weeks, man. I don't know why I put this in this. But it's like I want y'all to have full history. Where I was, what caused it, and where I'm at now. I'm actually, I'm, I'm a minister. Oh, God forbid, a transgender minister. But yes, I am a minister. Um, not in a traditional sense. I'm not like a teacher so much as a bullshitter. And, uh, and I take care of homeless cats and stuff you know and try to help other homeless um ministries that, that tend to homeless animals when i can <laughs> i haven't been able to for a long time but there was a time when i would have a little bit of extra money and i could funnel it out you know and help help entities um it wasn't ever extra but that's the kind of person i am so hey if you hear this story or you're presented with the opportunity to click and sign and get that up in front of somebody that might, um, you know, uh, might try and give me justice. Uh, you're actually doing a good thing for somebody that, you know, uh, I, I'm actually, uh, you could do worse for a person. <laughs> you know, I don't want to say, hey, yeah, I'm a good person and I deserve it because, well, you might not feel that way. But I sure don't deserve to be under legal martial law still, right? <laughs> Any of you who have experienced any form of martial law understand that uh, that's that's a fate worse than death. That's that you, you can't live like that, man. <laughs> and I've been living like that for 37 years. Like a little kid, I have to get drove around. I don't get to be a man. I can't go get a driving job. I can't uh, work my trade as a mechanic because insurance won't cover me to move a car or a truck on the lot. Because <laughs> I don't have a license. <laughs> Ain't that some shit? So it's like, you know, my investment in my trade was in schooling was a waste. Um, so, you know, this is where I'm at. I'm, I'm emasculated. I'm incapacitated. I'm in a hole due to what I did as a teenager. And, you know, there has to come a point where, all right, you're forgiven for that. You served enough time. Here's your license back. Go on and get your driving job. Get off SSI. And, and pay taxes and, and, and do what you was going to do, you know? Buy yourself a place to live for you and your homeless animals, you know? Um, fund your ministry yourself. That's what I want to do. I just want to work, man. 
<laughs> I'm tired of this. I'm tired of SSI. 